unlike Burton Russell, I do not know for certain what starts man on to philosophical activity. But one thing seems to be clear. It is this that man is finite. Man is finite. At least he regards himself to begin with as finite. He finds that he cannot have control or doesn't have control over so many things. He is not all knowing. He cannot move wherever he wants to because his body becomes the impeding factor. So his mind can travel anywhere. Right? At some time or the other, he becomes aware of his finitude. He also comes to know that he makes mistakes. He is often, if not always, in error. He cannot judge properly, he cannot know properly. But this is only at the level of knowledge. There is a more basic thing, a more fundamental thing. That is what had propelled at least Indian philosophical thinking to move further. And that is because, as you know, when Mahatma Buddha was asked whether there is a self whether there is a God, he said, don't ask these questions. Tell me whether there is suffering. Tell me whether you suffer or not. He saw an aged man, he saw a dying man, so and so forth. And he concluded that this is to everybody and that this is going to happen to me also. Right? But he did not accept this fact at that, at face value. He wanted to know there must be some reason for it. And there must be perhaps some way out of it. What is it that causes suffering? And what is it that may lead us away from suffering? Right? The same motive is to be found in the very first karika of Sankhya Karika. Dukkha Traya Vighata. Sankhya is earlier, earlier. So this is one common element between Sankhya and Buddhism. So Sankhya says, as Buddhism says, I'm not going into the respective answers today, though I'll be concerned with Sankhya answer today. Anyway, so Sankhya says, as Buddha said, Tell me what is given to you. What is given to you? Tell me that one thing which affects you most. Which affects you most. Which pervades most of your experience. Do zada kar zada tar aapke anubhav mein aata hai. 
प्राप्त करेंगे शरीर का दुख है आँख का दुख है मन का दुख है वृद्धावस्था का दुख है मृत्यु का दुख है कोई ना कोई दुख कोई प्रिय व्यक्ति के छूटने का द पैंग ऑफ सेपरेशन फ्रॉम सम लव एट वन फ्रॉम मदर फादर सो ऑन राइट सो पेन इज गिवन इन एक्सपीरियंस इज अ मैटर ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इट इज अनडेनाइबल even advaita vedanta does not deny it do it says pain is unreal finally doesn't matter but says pain happens to us we can't deny it so sankhya says so this is the one motivating factor for sankhya thinking abighat pain impinges upon our consciousness as i often use the expression impinges it tells upon us it tells upon us and then if we are sufficiently reflective mimamsa and jigyasa some people may say oh it is a fact of life we have to put up with it that's all some people say is a fact of life there is no doubt and we have to suffer it there is also no doubt about it but can there be can there be a way out of this suffering so he launches himself on an inquiry jigyasa his curiosity is aroused curiosity to know whether there is a way whether there is a redemption authentic and aikantik mukti from this suffering if someone says well there are means available which can remove your headache psychiatric help is there which can remove your depression so on so forth but sankh says atyantik and aikantik nibrit right an absolute removal of suffering and such a removal which must happen because sometimes you have seen when we take medicines they are unable to alleviate our pain right they are unable to cure us to again give an example of my wife my wife could not be cured of her multiple myeloma the deadliest of the cancers she could not be though we had to spend quite a few lakhs so but then sankh says atyantik and aikantik nivritti right there must be a and then and when you come to this you see the world around pain pain gives a rise to reflection on pain reflection on pain if a person is reflective enough if a person is reflective enough though everybody is capable of reflection is given to man because self consciousness is given to man but reflective consciousness is a is a a little further step you reflect on pain you sit soberly quietly at some place say what should i do he says he reflects on the world because he finds himself as a part of the world he says is there something in the world which causes suffering 
क्या जगत में कुछ ऐसा है कि तकलीफ होती है इज देर समथिंग रॉन्ग विद द वर्ल्ड इट सेल्फ और इज सफरिंग अ पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इट सेल्फ सच दैट इफ वी आर इन द वर्ल्ड वी मस्ट सफर वी आर कंडेम टू सफर ही डजेंट हैव ए क्लियर आंसर विद एनी सर्चेस एंड सर्चेस एंड वेन ई सर्चेस देन ही कम्स टू फाइंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हाउ हाउ मस्ट द वर्ल्ड बी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड हाउ मस्ट द वर्ल्ड बी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड सच दैट देर इज सफर जस्ट एज वी थिंक वाई आई एम सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड दैट आई सफर राइट मेरे में ऐसा क्या है कि मैं सफर करता हूं वाई शुड आई सफर आई हैव डन वेल इन दी एग्जाम वाई शुड आई फेल वाई शुड आई गेट लेसर परसेंटेज इन दी एग्जाम सो एंड सो फोर देर कैन बी एनी नंबर ओकेजन विच प्रोपेल यू टू रिफ्लेक्ट एंड ही शांत फिलोसफर कम्स देर मस्ट बी समथिंग इन दी वर्ल्ड of which i am a part because it's not a great discovery is an ordinary discovery to come to realize then one is part of the world first one is part of a family then part of a larger world one is part of a school and then of a university and so on part of the world there are other men and people who are like me and who suffer alike so i'm part of the world i have seen almost everybody suffering all right you must have seen almost everybody you come across suffering from one thing or another so is there something with wrong with the world but what this world consists of what is this world made of such that is cause is just suffering is cause is just pain is jagat ka swabhav kya kya hai what is the nature of the world what is the nature of the world that is causes pain and to inquire into the nature of the world into is to inquire into what constitutes it what are those basic principles which constitute it right and sankhya says that sankhya says again as a matter of given experience that there are things which look to the sankhya philosopher matter or unconscious unconscious matter is a english expression for practically that there are things which are unconscious and there are things which are conscious he soon realizes that this table cannot respond to my inquiry cannot perceive me while while i can perceive it table cannot perceive it perceive me sorry while i can perceive it so many material objects which cannot perceive me i can perceive so at this level at the very level of perception that is why perception is considered a primordial mode of knowledge primordial mode mode of knowledge so at the very level of perception say visual perception for example right we come to draw a distinction between what is unconscious and what is conscious and then he he sees he observes men dying men and women dying he says a person was he must have seen somebody dying he says that this person 
look to be moving on his own volition, talking on his own volition, thinking on his own volition until a moment back. And now it's such a body called corpse which cannot move, which cannot throb unless moved from the outside. A dead body cannot be moved, cannot move on its own like I am moving on my own, on my own volition, isn't it? A dead body can't be moved from outside. A dead body cannot be moved until, unless moved from the outside, unless moved externally. So he comes to realize that there comes a time when there's an event which he later on comes to term mrityu or death. That live bodies which were conscious until some days ago are now unconscious. So the first distinction he draws between is between conscious, conscious, there are things which are unconscious, there are things which are conscious, he thinks and I think rightly that he is conscious, man is conscious. Even animals are conscious. Right? And he thinks there must be two principles. There can't be a third principle. He realizes that materiality cannot be reduced to consciousness and consciousness cannot be reduced to materiality. Materi matter, it's the word, is the name he gives to, th he gives to achetan, achetan principle. It's just giving a name, you can giving it, you are given atan, you know, any name. Chetan and achetan. Am I right so far? He said there must be two principles. They are at the foundation of the world. The world is made up of two principles, consciousness and matter, which is unconscious. And who's, he soon realizes, he soon realizes that there are, that both these principles are are present in, you know, in his, in himself, in himself, that he has a body and he has a consciousness. That when body sleeps, he is not conscious. When body awakes, he is conscious. He reflects upon sleep. He is not conscious. He was not aware of anything. When he was dreamlessly asleep, he was not aware of anything. But when he awakes, he's aware of things. From these two, from this reflection, I shall be short because I have to cover almost the whole, almost the whole gamut of things. So that means this distinction is given to him in experience. This has not been taught to him. This is given to him in experience. The words of rocks, mountains, lakes, we cannot perceive him. I can swim in the lake, but lake cannot swim in me. Right? I can swim in Ganga, Ganga cannot swim in me. So he says that his, his. He thinks that there is one principle called Prakriti or Pradhana 
and Purush, Purush, Consciousness, Chetan, Chaitanya, and Prakriti, Achetan. And since in his own, own self, in his own structure, he finds, he finds the co-presence, co-presence, proximity of both these principles, both these elements, matter and consciousness. He, he thinks, oh, I can be conscious of my hand. But my hand cannot be conscious of me. So he finds in himself the element of consciousness and the element of unconscious matter in his own body. Right? Isn't it? Yes, yes. 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 Yes, I think, is pervading everything. And then, uh, even hand cannot to be consciousness, but the liver, every particle of matter has consciousness. Otherwise, how is working in the marvelous manner? Uh, has consciousness. No, I agree to that proposition, but that is a later conclusion. That is a later conclusion. Sankhya agrees that matter is always conjoined with consciousness. But I am talking of the starting reflection. He says, I can touch my hand, this hand can touch it, me. but only if I want. Only if I want. Who is this person who wants? Consciousness. I will, I desire, I know. All these are conscious states. So he comes upon two principles. The principle of matter. Yes, you want to say something, Shankaraji? Okay, okay. The principle of matter, prakriti, and the principle of consciousness. And he thinks, they must be present everywhere together, just as they are present in me. They are present in me. Right? Huh? 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 Starting say applicable. Don't distract me now. Now don't distract me. Okay. He comes about these two principles and he says that they must be co-present, co-present. Sannidhana, Sanyoga. Sannidhana, Sanyoga. Sanyoga is often translated both by Yukti Deepika and Vachaspati as Sannidhana or Sannikarsha. Para Sannikarsha Sangita says Pani Banini. Para Sannikarsha. When there is nothing in between. When there is nothing in, in between. That is proximity association, Sangita. And we see there is nothing in between, between consciousness and matter. I want to move my hand, I want my hand. Nothing can prevent it except perhaps paralysis. But then I can move this hand, or I can move my foot. I can move something in me if I'm conscious. If I'm conscious, right? Right? Shut up. OK. Sanidhan and Sahyo. Now, from these two principles, I'll be quick. I'll now be quick, because much of uh, Many of the details I have covered 
if but briefly. So I'll be short. From these, the combination of these two principles, creation begins. Creation begins. And this is Prakriti, Mahat, Ahankar, from Ahankar on one side, Panchatanamatra, on the other side, Ekadashendriya. 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 And from this Panchatanamatra, Panchamahabhut. Panchamahabhut. Mahabhut. We are all constituted of these things. Panchitan Matra se Mancha Mahabhut nikalta. Ek Adha Shendriya se kuch ni nikalta. Right. <laughs> Panchitan Matra gives rise to Pancha Mahabhut. There is a logic in this. Even such a man as the Gyan Bhikshu has to say that I do not know what is the logic behind this order that first of all arises Mahat and then Ahankar and then. He says, I believe this because Shuti says that. But I think, I think there can be, there can be some effort at trying to know what is the logic behind it. No, this Prakriti is, has contact with Purush. And then arises Mahat. Mahat is Adhyavasaya. Buddhi Adhyavasaya Buddhi. There is Mahat. And first of all, when there is a slight awareness of anything, When there is a slight awareness of anything, this awareness is of assertoric type, affirmative type. First of all, later on comes ahankara. First of all, there is simply awareness. And then comes the awareness of myself as seeing something, as seeing something. There is awareness and then comes the awareness of myself as seeing something, as seeing a tree, as seeing a man, as seeing a fan. Ahankar, Mahat, Ahankar. Without Ahankar, there cannot be an identity. So Ahankar has to be there. Because there are many selves and all selves are individuals. There is no universal self. There is no Brahman in Sankhya. Universal self. In Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta, I mean, there is only one cosmic universal self called Brahman. Jeevatmas are false. They are unreal. They are false reflections of the universal self. False because they are caused by ignorance. Right? But Sankhya says, if there are infinite number of bodies, past, present, and future, there must be infinite number of selves. But it only says, bahutva, more than one self. This is what every philosophy which believes in the plurality of selves says, many, there are many, nana, nana, there are many. Many means more than one. And more than one means any number, any number. It can be infinite number, it can be a finite number. Sankhya does not pronounce any judgment on that. Right? Even if it's billions and billions of cells, it is still a finite number. And if there cannot be 
a limit on that, it is infinite. Sankhya remains silent on that, and I think rightly. Because those selves cannot be counted. Because among the counted, there must be the selves which are liberated. Mukt atmaon ko bhi janna padega. Aur mukt atmaon ko kaise ginenge yam? Mukt atmaon ko hum dekh nahi sakte. Badd atmaon ko dekh sakte. लेकिन बद्ध आत्मा को कितना देख सकते हैं ठीक है सो शांत से इज इफ देर इज इफ देर इज सेल्फ कॉन्शियसनेस सेल्फ एंड कॉन्शियसनेस आर आइडेंटिकल पुरुष आत्मा चेतना चिति शक्ति दीज आर सिनोनिम्स सो इज इज दीज आर प्रकृति महत अहंकार From ahankar arises panchatarmata, ainas, panchatarmata, and ekadashendi. Because I, I, I am aware of myself, and perhaps I cannot be aware of myself unless I am aware of something else. This something else is panchatarmata. I must be aware. Of some shabd, some sparsh, some roop, some ras, some gant. And how can we be aware of these things unless I have organs, sense organs, which can know these five type, five categories of objects? And then I have five cognitive senses. But mere cognition is not enough. I have a body. This is how I reflect. I have a body which moves. My hands move. I like something and I want to hold it. So there must be an instrument by which I hold it. There must be something through which I embrace somebody. I am. I like my child. I want to embrace it. How do I embrace it? Embrace is a great touch. Even Prime Minister Narendra Modi embraces the president of another country when meeting. It's a gesture. It's a gesture of warmth. It's a gesture of affection. It's a gesture of love. You can't do without it. You can't do without it. You touch. You want to touch. And when I went in 2006. With my daughter to Ajanta paintings, she was working. She was doing her doctorate on Ajanta paintings, so she asked me to accompany her. She could go alone, so I went to Aurangabad, where Ajanta paintings are there. So she showed me. I am not interested in art. Art does not, uh, you know, accept. Okay, this painting is very beautiful, but I am not a connoisseur. I can't tell you why it is beautiful. I can only say it looks to me beautiful. Just as I can tell you why a woman looks to me beautiful, but I can't tell you why does why does she look to me beautiful. <laughs> like that. So I can't analyze a woman. I can't analyze a painting, like that. So she showed me a painting. Because I used to be at my hotel and would go to the Ajanta painting side, cave side, only uh, around five or six o'clock. She took some three thousand photographs of the different paintings. All right. Anyway, that was only a digression. So I saw. She showed me a painting where a man is trying to touch the woman he loves, and the woman is wearing a sari, sari-like thing, and. He does this. Suppose this is the figure of the woman, and man's hand is here, just here, inclining towards the woman and yet not touching her. Incline, inclining towards the woman, he wants to touch it because he loves her, and yet un, unable to because of some possible resistance. Conceivable, conceivable resistance. Oh, what are you doing? Right. That is 
unable to touch her properly out of shyness out of shyness you have seen old hindi movies right yes how much time it takes a man to touch the hand of a woman they love the woman he loves how much time it takes <laughs> he has to beat about the bush <laughs> so so he finds that in him all these things arise ahankar panch taramatra and ekadash indri there must be things which are known and which he knows he, he starts reflecting from himself as i said reflecting from himself and ekadash indri sense organs are needed gyan indriyas are needed but also are needed pancha karma indriyas if i want to speak i have to use my tongue and mouth to speak but first i must want to speak if i don't want to speak i will stop and stay quiet so wanting willing and to be able to speak you can be able to speak only if you have the instruments and here are the instruments karnas karnas ekadashi but then further reflection shows him that shows him that whatever he does whatever he does bears fruit limited or unlimited not whatever he does certain things that he does bear fruit he wants to visit taj mahal he buys a ticket he goes by train and is able to see taj mahal both for self visual organ and his hands and feet he buys the ticket through hands and walks through his feet boards the train through his feet isn't it so all these karanas are functioning simultaneously thus while i'm speaking i'm conscious and conscious what i'm speaking at the same time involuntarily my hands are also moving my eyes are also moving there is sometimes a twinkle in my eyes right all these things happen together and then he says but then the inquiry started from suffering first of all then he tries what he tries to know whether the suffering is because of the world then he must know what the world is like what the world is constituted of he says it is constituted of two elements and all these things arise from the proximity between two things right and then he realizes he realizes that he suffers because he is attached whenever he is attached to something or dislikes something there's perturbance in his mind there's pain in his mind this perturbance can be of any measure it can be extreme pain it can be less pain more or less pain it can be extreme pain i tell you whenever in my young days whenever i would go to any place outside delhi i'll get attached to that place especially ganga when i used to rishikesh along with my parents they used to take me there during summer vacations in my school and they used to take me there and we you and we used to we would stay there for about a month and whenever i would leave rishikesh i there were tears in my eyes i attached i get attached to that place that is why a sanyasi even a person like a sanyasi has been advised in indian thinking not to sleep under the same tree for the second day not to sleep under the same tree for this for another day you get attached to the tree i for example i am attached to my 
bathroom, my toilet, and I want my toilet to accompany me everywhere, wherever I go. <laughs> I'm attached to my bed. I'm attached to my bed. And whenever I'm asked to sleep on a different bed, there is some inconvenience to me. There is some discomfort to me. It takes me time to adjust. Right? It's attached. Raga, Raga Moola. Raga Moola. And this, if I don't like somebody, I can't see his presence. He must be away from me. This too causes me pain. Why should that, that person appear before me again and again? Why should I have to encounter him? Right? If two women or men are living together, and they have to live together because they are members of the same family, but they don't like each other, the whole atmosphere gets vitiated. The whole atmosphere gets vitiated, and they have to separate ultimately. These are just logic examples. These are secular, worldly examples. Desh, Raga and Desh. But why attachment leads to suffering? Because whatever I am attached to, I cannot have always. This is my finitude. ये मेरी सीमा है कि जिस चीज से मुझे प्रेम है जिस चीज में आसक्त हूं कुर्सी मेज एनी थिंग राइट यस सो आई कॉन्ट गेट इट ऑल दिस आई कॉन्ट गेट इट ऑल दिस यस प्लीज यस 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 अनित्य यस Aditya. Yes. I cannot find it all this. Right? People die. People get sick. My grandson gets sick. I get sick. <laughs> Because though I'm not sick in the same way, this mental perturbance with me. Oh, he's sick and he's not locking as he used to. is quiet so rag and dwesh and then sankhi finds that there must be an end to it but why is rag and dwesh because we for example are attached to our body so sankhi says this body is different from yourself its nature is different from yourself though it is for practical purposes your body but this is not the only body yourself can have yourself can have many body according to the actions done in the previous birth or actions done in the present birth you will have many bodies there are ways of experiencing the world and there are ways of getting liberated from the world so sankhi says rag and desh dharma and adharma gyan and agyan and why rag and desh arises because we are not acquainted we are we do not know that there is a fundamental distinction between purush and prakriti purush by its very nature is non attached is sakshi and drashta but we think we as selves as consciousness we think we are attached to something in fact it is buddhi which is attached to something and we confound ourselves confuse ourselves ourselves s e l v e s with buddhi and we think we are attached or otherwise and therefore suffer but when we realize that we are different beings from our body right while our body is mortal is destructible our selves is eternal nitya anitya vastu viveka that applies to sankhi right there must be a knowledge that there is a distinction between nitya vastu and anitya vastu anitya is our body and nitya is our self and when we realize this distinction we find final emancipation is that clear i hope that should suffice as a brief outline of the sankhi philosophy if there are any queries 
um, questions, I am most willing to entertain them without assuring you that I will be able to satisfy you. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, to go. Yes. I want to confirm uh, something that I understood about the 23 tattoos. Uh, I understand physical creation start from Pancha Mahabuta onwards. And then our physical body, all physical body, animals, everything, is from Pancha Mahabuta onwards. And then I seen. I, I understood, yes, yes. Mahat, Ahamkara, all these tattoos are in the levels of, you can uh, sell in, are principles, uh, energetical levels, like suppose uh, pretty be, uh, apa, uh, water, whatever there are, uh, and then we have our body from pretty be, and Pancha Mahabuta, in the same manner, I see we have Mahat Ahankara from some substrato. From? One substratum, one tatua, what is called Mahat, other, other tatua, what is called Ahankara, we get Ahankara. And Indriya also, here, uh, all the Indriya, I think, are not physical. In this no, 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 you are right. No, no, no. from Pancha Mahabuta, yes, get yes. No, no, I, 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 I understand you. I understand I you. I don't know. Like you. No, I understand. I follow you. Uh, I, I hope I followed you. See, you can call this Manas, Buddhi, and Ankara psychical tattvas, but they are material nevertheless. Just as, just like my foot and my hands are different from my brain. But both are material. Both are material. Similarly, we say psychophysical, but psyche does not mean self. It is manas of Indian philosophical thinking. Manas is always regarded in all Indian philosophical thinking as a bhautika tattva and not as a chetana tattva. Nowhere. It is a bhautik, it is a material element. But within material principles, there is a distinction between those material principles which, are, which look more psychical and which look less psychical. Indriyas, for example, try to know. Mahat cannot know. Indriyas can know. But my hand cannot know. My hand can move. But my eyes can see. Isn't it? So there are different functions assigned to these, and you are right, there's Mahat, Buddhi, and Ankar. They constitute one kind of tattvas. I agree there. I agree there. But nevertheless, they are achetana tattvas. They are not conscious, yes. Okay, now uh, any questions further? After the liberation of all the cells, does the everything begins again? Which thing, for example? All the whole process. See, all the these things, all, all these things, things, except the gross tattvas, Mahabhutas, all these things constitute the sukshya sharira. And when a man gets liberated, his sukshya sharira disappears. I am saying when all the cells, I mean all the purushas. No. How can, with, how can, with the liberation of one self, can all the cells be liberated? Doesn't See, janana marana karana nam. Tatiniyabad, just a moment. All the cells have their bodies at different times. They are born with different bodies at different times. Some were born with different bodies 2,000 years ago. Kalidas, for example. He had a body, I presume, like me, like us, right? And that is why he was able to write. So he was born some 2,000 years ago. So his body and my body did not come into existence together. So when our bodies differ, our dispositions differ, right? How can one self be liberated? All cells be liberated when one self is liberated. 
एम नॉट सेंग दैट आई एम सेंग दे मस्ट बी सम टाइम ना जब आई मीन सेल्स जितने बच्चों में सब लिब्रेट हो गए होंगे आई मीन कुछ कोई तो ऐसा टाइम आता होगा बोलो सब मुक्त हो जाए सब मुक्त हो जाए दैट सीम्स दैट सीम्स टू बी थेटिकल पॉसिबिलिटी एज ए लॉजिकल पॉसिबिलिटी इट कैन नॉट बी रूल्ड आउट बट सपोज दैट देर इज एन इनफाइनाइट नंबर ऑफ सेल्स सपोज दैट पॉसिबिलिटी ऑल्सो कैन बी लॉजिकली रूल्ड आउट दैट देर इज एन इनफाइनाइट नंबर ऑफ सेल्स सो सम सेल्स वुड ऑलवेज रिमेन through which the creation would remain okay okay yes shankar ji yes sir chetana eva lingam yes. so again what we are talking is sankhya also it's an appearance like you know like advaita yes sir, sir. Uh, not like uh, vishishta advaita where world is real yes sir, sir. right sir yes No, 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 no. There's a difference. I'll tell you. What is the difference? This is an. This is a very, uh, very good and important question. चेतन लिंगम चेतना वज दिस अचेतन लिंग चेतना वज ही सेज दैट बुद्धि अपीयर्स बिकॉज ऑफ ए मिस्टेक बिकॉज ऑफ ए कंजेनिटल एरर राइट दिस विट इज प्राइमोडियल राइट अचेतन लिंगम अपीयर्स एज इफ इट्स पोजेस्ट ऑफ कॉन्शियस this appearance is false no doubt as in advait vedant but nevertheless advait regards even the achetana linga itself not only this as agyan agyanadi sakal sakal vastu uh, uh, what is that अज्ञानादि सकल वस्तु जातम वस्तु जातम इन वेदांत सार फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट इज इट इज अवस्तु इट इज अवस्तु इट इज अनरियल इट इज अनरियल नाउ सांख्य डज नॉट रिगार्ड दिस बुद्धि एज अनरियल बट अद्वैत वेदांत रिगार्ड्स इवन द ऑपरेशन ऑफ बुद्धि एज ऑन द होल unreal at the ultimate plane but at the ultimate plane sankhya regards both the effect both matter and consciousness real are real there yeah are real there yes i am forgetting that line but perhaps it might i might be able to recollect it uh, no no uh, it's a famous line अज्ञानादि सकल जड़ समूह हो अवस्तु अज्ञानादि सकल जड़ समूह हो अवस्तु सकल जड़ समूह हो सारा जो जड़ जगत है जो अज्ञान से शुरू होता है अज्ञानादि एट द बेसिस ऑफ विच लाइज अज्ञान सकल जड़ समूह द होल मटेरियल वर्ल्ड इज अवस्तु इज अड्रियल is unreal hai right. sank says this appearance is unreal but not what appears not what appears but yes but achetram exists effect exists but advait vedant says effect is unreal there is only karana but then they realize their arise their their uh, 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 there comes up the problem whether there can be a karan which does not lead to a real effect that problem remains so we should not talk of karan at all yes we should not talk of karan at all any further queries 
anybody, any query, ask me the meaning of anything, said, what, what do you mean by this? You just say like that. Shall I stop then? Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. It has been both a privilege and a pleasure for me to be here and to be associated with you and to discuss a bit of Yukta Deepika and a bit of Sankhya Karika of the great Ishwar Krist. I don't need to emphasize the importance of Sankhya thought. At the moment, Sankhya thought as it is available to us is available to us only in the form of Sankhya Karika. So whether there was, as I said on the first day, whether there was a theistic sankh or atheistic sankh is a question for scholars to decide. I don't know whether atheistic sankh would have been a better proposition than atheistic sankh or vice versa. I do not give any verdict on this. But Sankhya says, when they have provided for consciousness and when they have provided for matter, a god is not needed to explain the world. The whole thing is, first of all, to account for the world, to explain the world. And when these two principles can explain the world fairly well, according to Sankhya, it says, no third tattva like God is needed. Because philosophy says there must be minimum of principles. Laghav. Laghav hona chahiye. Tattva mein. Advaita Vedanta says that only one principle can explain the entire world. I would not go into that question here. That I reserve for some later occasion, God willing. Thank you.